Olá, meninos e meninas, cadê minha Margarete? Ela está aqui. Se você está chegando pela primeira vez nesse canal, eu sou a Natália Arcuri, fundadora da Me Poupe, uma empresa de impacto social que tem o maior canal de finanças do mundo chamado Me Poupe. Se você não viu ainda, vai lá ver. Quem está aqui comigo neste momento é a Duzen Tecal. Ela é a fundadora de uma organização sem fins lucrativos que colabora com a equidade de gênero, protegendo meninas, protegendo mulheres de todo o mundo, principalmente na Alemanha, no Iraque. A gente vai saber um pouquinho mais sobre o trabalho dela. First of all, thank you so much for being here, for what you are doing. And be welcome to the SDG Pavilion, our studio here. Mm -hmm. First thing, can you introduce yourself yeah, and tell you. everyone mm -hmm. the amazing job you are doing? Thank you so much for having me here. It's a big honor to be here today. And my name is Duzen Tekal. I'm a human rights activist and the founder of the human rights organization How I Help. I'm a journalist and I became um, a war reporter and human rights activist overnight because of the genocide against my own people, the religious community, the Yazidis, the Kurdish people. And 2014 was my life-changing moment when I went to Iraq and Syria and saw where, what Daesh and ISIS has done to our people, especially to our women. And um, since that day, we are still um, yeah, fighting together with my sisters. Uh, we founded out on the ashes of genocide, our NGO, How I Help. What kind of uh, violence women still suffer nowadays that you uh, try to combat and to end with your work? Mm -hmm. We work a lot of with ISIS survivors, but they don't call themselves victims anymore. They w don't want to be victimized. It's like they say we are survivors. We are agents of change. And of course, rape as weapon of war is something which Daesh have been used to our women. But our women said, fear is no option. We are strong. We are stronger than ISIS. And this kind of agents of change we try to amplify mm -hmm. and of course that was a big taboo no one was talking about uh, rape as weapon of war but for example ISIS survivor like Nejla Mato or Nadia Murad break the taboo also in our own community and therefore in my opinion they became role models of course mm -hmm. and this is what we try to do we have to act now we have to do more for our people we have to do more for everyone. So mm -hmm. it's not just about what happened to Yazidi women, it is what happened to all women. I really want, want to bring something to our conversation because I first started my company that started with a, a website and then with a YouTube channel because I really want to give the power of the money to every woman in Brazil because we suffer a lot because of the financial dependency and I, I was a journalist mm -hmm. as you I am a journalist mm -hmm. as you reporting things in the field and I saw that violence like 70% of the women stays uh, uh, above a violent environment because of financial dependency mm -hmm. that's why I started using my voice mm -hmm. to spread the message of financial mm -hmm. literacy mm -hmm. in a very easy way mm -hmm. and in your um, opinion uh, what you are seeing is the money involved in new way mm. in what you see or is more more like a mm. religious thing mm. or is the money involved as well mm. in your mm -hmm. yeah the money is a very important issue so what the women said to us for example who are living right now in the idp camps is not just that they want justice this is the one thing that they want they also said we want a future, we want hope, we want something to eat and to drink. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a very um, important connection between um, cultural um, issues and also the money. Because at the moment when the, when the women become self-independent and part mm -hmm. of education and jobs, uh, they get more respected yeah. also from their childs. And this is something which is very important for our human rights organization. It's not about that we have to survive anyone. No, uh, they know exactly what they want, what they need. It is like, okay, stand behind us and like, yeah, support our, our causes. And uh, we are working in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I, I really believe 
your story will uh, connect it and inspire so many people in Brazil and all, all over the world. Would you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you faced during mm -hmm. the last eight years mm -hmm. or nine years maybe mm -hmm. in your journey mm -hmm. so they can know, okay, how mm -hmm. are the, the path mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. be someone like mm -hmm. you? I understand very deep that you understand what we went through yeah. because we have same issues, I think. <laughs> yeah. And for example, two days ago, we were invited uh, at Harvard, at the uh, uh, Harvard Kennedy School, mm -hmm. and we showed our second documentary, Gian. It was about an ISIS survivor, and I saw myself in the documentary, but I didn't know me anymore. So I saw me and I asked myself, oh my God, what have she went through? I didn't ask me this question Goosebumps. because the other one was more important than me. Mm -hmm. When you take care of ISIS survivors, it's not important how you feel. Yeah. But it has it has big influence about my life. It was like I felt so heavy. It was hard. It was difficult. And to be part of life again was a hard job for me. And uh, I took help for myself. So I tried to save everyone but I lost my own voice and therefore I think it's very very challenging and this is the reason why we need unity solidarity sisterhood all over the world we have to stay together and it's not about women against men yeah we need the good men and the new world against the old world so this is something which we want to create and and therefore we are standing here yeah thank you so much for your work for your life and hope you keep going that path with bravery and courage, encouraging other people as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.